Hello and welcome to the heart of the matter. I'm Adeolu Adeferasin and today we're going to have an awesome conversation with Rehir Giwa Osagi, the CEO and founder of Elite Box Fitness. We're going to be talking about the health craze going on in this country, how we can help the health of our nation's people, um, youth and otherwise. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. <music> Hello and welcome back to Heart of the Matter. I'm here with Ray here, Giwa Osagi. Um, what's up, man? I'm going to ask you, you know, what's your name? Where do you come from? What do you do? Okay. Um, what do I do? Um, quite a lot of things. So, well, what people know me for Mr. is... <laughs> exactly, it's Elite Box. So, Elite Box, we are the first and only commercial boxing gym in Lagos, Nigeria. Okay, so let's let's talk about where did that come from, where did the idea come from, where did the passion for that come from? Uh, I used to play football with a guy called Chris at uh, in school. We both played semi-professionally in England and played to a pretty good level and I actually wanted to be a professional footballer, so that was kind of the path I was taking. Although um, simultaneously I studied, uh, you know, worked, you know, did the whole professional academia and career-wise that path, as most Nigerians would encourage yeah. so to speak um, but at the same time I continued playing sports um, I had a really bad knee injury and I tried to carry on playing with it but after a while I was like man nah, this it's is not just working. yeah this is bad all right so <laughs> I want to delve into that because how is that how does that work especially like you said the Nigerian there's going to be a Nigerian aspect to it. So when yeah. someone wants to go up and they want to do sports and they invested yeah. in doing sports and yeah. yes you carried on in terms of education we all know you as in <laughs> Yeah, smart guy. <laughs> well, I, I'd like to think so. So, I so. <laughs> like, I mean, and you've done a lot of stuff in the professional space as well. You're in the oil and gas industry. Yeah. So, yeah. like, how how does balancing those two things work? I think it boiled down probably initially to not really having a choice. It's just the environment that that I was in. So, both my parents were doctors. So, if if you can imagine, I'm already in that sort of academia environment. Yeah. So it's just something that. You're kind of expected to do. You're expected to to come home with uh, good grades. You're expected to you know be a studious individual and also yeah. upstanding individual, so to speak. So it's just, I guess it was just molded in me right from the start. Was there any kind of pushback from your parents in terms of wanting to do sports? Not, not even with elite boxing, but let's let's start even at the beginning. <laughs> I want to be a professional footballer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, what? Because this Push. was before Rooney and all these people were getting definitely, paid hundreds of thousands definitely, of pounds. Definitely, exactly. Before, you know, people were making a lot of money in the sport and stuff. Um, yeah, definitely a little bit of pushback, but not to the point whereby I was outrightly uh, discouraged. It was more like snide remarks, like, mm, you sure don't want to apply for this job? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, <laughs> that, that, sort of, that sort of thing. So it's like, it's, it's all about perspective. That's how I say it. In the sense that if I saw that as, you know, my parents or family members trying to say, look, this is not going to work, do this, I would feel, look, they're pushing me back. But actually, I saw it as they just have your best interest at heart yeah. and they just don't want you to fail. They don't want you to struggle. They don't want you to, you know, be someone that is going to ultimately find things hard in the future for yourself. Yeah. So that's how I just viewed it. And so I wouldn't say they, they were discouraging or anything. Yeah. No. So let's talk a bit about the transition because it's obviously it's going to come with like, it's going to affect you mentally, emotionally, when you have to deal with something like an injury in sport. And how yeah. was that for you in terms of thinking, 
I can actually transition from this sport to another one yeah. or how does it affect your mental state, I guess? It's, uh, I mean, I think <laughs> you probably have to ask past girlfriends, you know, <laughs> they would probably know more about that sort of thing. <laughs> nah, it's, it's uh, I think, you know, I used to get injured quite often when it came to um, football. So it was a matter of, yeah, I would probably go home and you know, family members would just be seeing me looking just miserable, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely miserable. Uh, but I would just plug on and carry on. The interesting thing about that is that because it's a team sport, you have people to um, to lean on. Yeah. You have um, you know resources and individuals who can give you advice and kind of like help you through rough moments. So I would say you know having the right people around you probably made a big difference for me around that yeah. time. Um, now in terms of transitioning over to another sport, boxing is um, it's an inherently tough sport physically. But I think a lot of people who don't actually practice the sport or train at all, it's mentally tougher than it is physically. Yeah. That's the thing. So I believe being a sportsman prepared me a little bit, but then moving on to boxing is taking my mental, just like concentration level, confidence to another level. Yeah. What, was it like the natural or obvious choice for you or... Did you like reel through different sports and I think, okay, maybe I can't do that, maybe I can do this instead? <laughs> and it, it was probably, I wouldn't say obvious, but it was probably the natural transition for me just because um, I had people around me who were also playing football on my team, but at the same time using boxing to um, augment their football fitness. Yeah. Because once you're boxing fit, you're pretty much functionally fit for almost yeah. any sport. So that's what they were doing. So I always used to tag along with them. So it was just, I'll say the natural, not necessarily obvious, but a yeah. natural transition. Okay. Yeah. So let's talk about elite box. Like Badly. how, how coming up with that idea, seeing it as a business opportunity about, and then the passion behind doing it, because obviously you take something and yes, it's a good business idea is one thing. Another thing if it is how passionate are you about it and, yeah. and about the people that you're getting, your customers and all these kind of things. Okay. Um, well, we can go back to the name. You know, it's interesting you mentioned that you like the name because I think with any business, uh, you do have to take some time to, to kind of decide on your name. It's not something that, you know, oh, I didn't. I didn't take weeks or months or anything. I just decided, yeah. okay. I had a couple in mind that were all equally good, but this one just kind of like you feel it. If I felt it. I felt that this kind of like represents what I'm trying to do and, you know, kind of what I'm about. So I'm glad you like it. Yeah. <laughs> but going back to the question, um, what it is, it's, it's I, I, think, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but you know, I used to box, like I used to compete in, in the UK. So I came at it from that, um, that point of view. I used to compete, I used to train um, with certain gyms and certain individuals, and then try to take it to a, a high level. However, I used to work simultaneously, as I mentioned yeah. um, earlier, and I got moved over to Nigeria by the company that I was working with. So that kind of like put that on pause in terms of like the competition aspect. Yeah. Um, so I looked at the scene here, and they've got a lot of talent on ground here, but as with some things, it's not that well structured, um, it's not that well supported, and there's simply not, that, not enough interest. So if you can put those three things together, you're gonna find it pretty tough to kind of maintain yeah. your passion for something here. So with that in mind, I decided to just, you know, I can create the, the thing that, that's missing, one, the thing that I want to do as well, two, and three, the thing that I'm good at. So I, I just married, you know, those sort of um, thought processes together came up with this. Okay, because yeah. the, these are the things I'm, I, I'm personally picking up. I mean, I'm not saying that this is, you know, yeah. just my personal opinions are yeah. like, okay, so when it comes to the name yeah. Elite Box, one of the things that stands out to me is, you know, how do you start gaining an audience somewhere like Nigeria mm -hmm. with something like that? You know, you're looking at the people you're training. What are your customer bases? Are usually yeah. going to be upper and middle class mm -hmm. in terms of a title like that? Mm -hmm. Accents comes with this. We have to feed all these <laughs> things into it. Yeah, how are you gonna, so how does that affect the people that are <laughs> trusting you in yeah. terms of... I believe yeah. this guy can get me fit. I believe this guy, because yeah. normally, you know, especially here, if you look at different areas of the yeah. class scheme, people are like, ah, what does this guy know about all of this? If I come into a ring now with him, I can probably <laughs> keep it. So, like, yeah. how does that work? It's, uh, it's all valid. Well, first things first, the, 
I think we have to just take a step back. So the, the health and wellness industry is littered with individuals who are physically talented but not um, accredited. Yeah. That's, that's something that a lot of people might not be aware of, but I'll let you know that's exactly how it is. Yeah. So um, one thing amongst many other things that differentiates us is that I'm actually accredited. So I'm actually a high-level boxing coach. So not just in Nigeria, but globally. Yeah. So I can walk into any gym in the world and say, look, you know, I'm a level, whatever I am. And they're like, okay, yeah, sure. Do you want to help us with this? That type yeah. of thing. So straight away, you know, I've, I've already covered those bases years ago. Yeah. Not just recently, years ago. So for me, it was just a no-brainer to say, look, I know uh, the method that I utilize to coach and I know it gets results. So yeah. ultimately, what the people care about, regardless of whether or not uh, someone has an accent or someone doesn't have an accent, yeah. what they care about results, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's that's. I want to talk about that as well. You're accredited. You're and not just like you said, not just here globally. Yeah. And it also means that you've done a lot of work um, abroad. You coach abroad. Yeah. You've coached abroad. You work with the Olympic, uh, yeah. the, the Great Britain Olympic boxing yeah. teams. Tell us a little bit about how that okay. came along and how that worked. So the way it works with the the Olympic training camps, it's um. It's more about, um, okay, so the Olympics every four years. The Olympics every four years. It, within those four years, you have many training camps at various gyms. So it's not that I work with the Olympians themselves. It's that you prepare people to be able to go for trials for the Olympics. Okay. That's how it works okay. here at these various gyms. So I work with a couple of um, people who eventually represent GB at some point or at least go up there for some trials. Yeah. And... Um, the sport itself is like kind of like if you you're invited for trials for a football team, that's how they do it yeah. over GB. Okay. Yeah. So you prep some people for that, and sometimes they make it, sometimes they don't. But just being invited, it means that you've literally gone through quite a few levels of, yeah. of like the weeding out process. It's not easy. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah, yeah so it's nice. It's nice. So we're gonna dive into a lot more and. The other side as well, in terms of looking at your corporate stuff and sure. the work that you've had, experience you've had. But before that, we're going to take a quick break. So just join us after the break as we continue talking with Ray here, Yuel Saigi, about Elite Box, other sides of his um, work and what he does, and the inspiration he's having on other people here in Nigeria. Thank you. <music> Hello and welcome back to Heart of the Matter. I'm still here talking with Ray here, Giwa Osagi. Um, let's continue the conversation. I want to look a little bit at finances, man. Okay. Just diving in. <laughs> no, because obviously you've had a great job in oil and gas and you're looking at things from that perspective. Now, how, what does it take for someone in that line of business, you're working at a good company, you get transferred to Nigeria and for you to leave that job and fully commit to what you're doing with Elite Box and different aspects of that. How's, how's, how do you even do that? Okay. I'm just looking at, I'm talking <laughs> as a creative. Yeah, no, I see. <laughs> it's, um, long story short, it's not glamorous at all, actually. It's not glamorous at all. It's, um, you have to, uh, well, I basically utilize a lot of my savings because I believe, and I still do believe strongly in what, you know, I'm trying to achieve. Yeah. So it, it's never been a situation whereby I had, I wish, had someone there like, you know, giving me all this cash Just and dropping saying, it doing this. No, not at all. <laughs> not glamorous at all. You, you know, I literally rolled up my sleeves, um, saved uh, X amount of money, pumped it into what I believed in, and I still do up till today. Yeah. So, um, you know, I own the whole thing and um, pretty much organically pay for the whole thing as well. Yeah. And 
that's that's the long story short. Because for me, obviously, that means that means you're speaking from a position of passion, what you're passionate about, yeah. what you believe you're trying to, you can achieve. Now, in terms of inspiring people and all of that, how does that come across, and how how do we, um, and what are your long term goals yeah. in terms of influencing health, fitness in Nigeria and across through this? Yeah, I mean, uh, okay, for us, Elite Box and myself as well, you know, we work with three pillars, ultimately. And this this is pretty much our vision. Oh, so vision, mission, and um, our vision and a mission statement as well. So the first pillar is pretty much, you know, getting as many people active as possible. That's just simplified. It's, um, it's achievable. And it also, it's the sort of, positive impact that we're trying to get out there ultimately yeah. trying to get people active as possible the second thing is specific to um to boxing so it's getting people active as possible is number one the first pillar and the second pillar is utilizing the platform that we have we're good at and also we maintain and continue to exceed at so utilizing boxing as a platform to get people active and the third the third pillar is also to we have, a, well, I feel we have a fiduciary um, duty to educate people as to how and why we're utilizing that sport. Yeah. So I can go e even That's deeper. That's going to be my next question. Yeah, exactly. I can go even deeper into that. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I'll pause and let you ask that. That's fine. <laughs> so those, those, are the three, those are the three pillars. And um, I feel if I'm not achieving that, you know, on a, literally on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm not satisfied at all. And you know when I get people onto my team, you know the team, the team, it's important you have the right team. Yeah. When I get people onto my team, I always let them know that look, all I'm asking for is excellence. Oh, that's all I'm asking yeah. for. Not, not a big <laughs> just deal. not much, you know. You not know, not, I don't want anything <laughs> average. <or> anything, <laughs> yeah. I'm just excellent. Exactly. And I always tell them, look, if you're trying to tug me back or you know trying to bring some negativity to this, just let me know now. It's not yeah. a big deal. You know, you don't have to be here. That sort of thing. And I'm brutally honest from the start and candid. And that's how I operate with yeah. everyone, literally. I think it's, you'll find it hard to find individuals that say, oh, he's, he's a bit this way, he's a bit this. No, not really, I'm a bit of a straight yeah. shooter. I think it's just because of the sport I'm in. Yeah. When I, I, I liken it to this. This is the analogy I use. When you're in the, the boxing ring, all the lies come out. All the lies come out. Because if I haven't been training, if I haven't been doing my runs, it's I haven't been my evident. coach, it is obvious. <laughs> it's very obvious right from the start. So that's how I live my life. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> in terms of that, and you know what's coming, but um, how do you separate between other forms of health and fitness that people do in other gyms and running in all of those different kind of potential sports and say boxing? And how is boxing the thing that you know, stands out that can help people? Yeah, it's, um, it, it's, it's truly a beautiful sport. And I'll tell you why. It's, it's almost a panacea for all levels of fitness. Um, it works, obviously, on the physicality and the physical side. You know, it gets you toned, it gets you defined. And th there's the other element of the sport, which is the non-competition element, which is thriving in the West, absolutely thriving in the West. And here, you know, we are doing our best, so to speak, right? Um, the reason it's thriving in other countries is because they, people understand the benefits of it. It's not because they ultimately love to punch. No, no. they yeah. understand that literally I'm going to go into a, a boxing gym, a, a quality boxing gym. I'm going to dedicate myself to however, whatever duration they, you know, they have available. And then they're going to achieve their goals. Goals typically tend to be to lose weight, to tone up, um, to build confidence, get some skills, and you know, to maybe learn some self-defense skills. You will learn all of that and you achieve all of that yeah. with boxing. The other thing is, um, which is highly, highly underrated, is the mental um, fortitude it develops. It's quite incredible. And I see it, I see it every day at the gym. There are people that come in, they're shy. We were discussing this earlier. They don't want to train with other people, that sort of thing. But after a while, they enjoy it so much. And you, 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 you can actually, it's palpable. You can feel their confidence growing yeah. and growing and growing. And that doesn't just stay in the gym. It permeates through their individual lives. You know, people are so stressed in Lagos. We all are because we're dealing with all kinds of individual things. But having that 
positive outlet because the way I see it, everyone needs an outlet. Everyone needs some sort of outlet. Now, people in life either pick a negative outlet, be it, you know, I don't know, alcohol, drugs, and that sort of thing, or some people pick positive outlets. You know, maybe they work with kids or, you know, they do sporting activities and that sort of thing. Yeah. But everyone needs an outlet. doesn't matter yeah. who you are. It's just how we are, how we're created as human beings, ultimately. Um, so boxing provides that positive outlet. Um, it allows people to well, be active, one, improve your physical health and also your mental well-being. Yeah. So that's why I absolutely personally love it. And I see it demonstrated every day. So it just fills my <laughs> cup. <laughs> yeah. Literally. I mean, so how do you deal? Because one thing, obviously, I think there's a definite mentality and approach when you think of boxing. You're like, yeah. man, you have to be, you already have yeah, to be at this standard definitely. and at this level to definitely, even be doing yeah. it. So how do you um, encourage, I guess, when it comes to clients who, yeah. like you said, some don't want to work out in public, yeah, some feel, you know, they don't have the fitness level even to start yeah, or yeah, yeah. health issues. And how do you balance those? If people have different health issues and working out how you can create unique settings for them. And yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a really good question. And I think that's, that is definitely an ongoing thing. Um, the, there, are, there are theories and there are facts. So the fact is, regardless of however anyone feels about it prior, once they experience it, they're better off. That's the fact. Now, the theories on, are me telling people this because they haven't yeah. actually physically experienced it. What we're doing, we're not, we're not reinventing the wheel. I think, I think it's important to establish that. And the majority of what you see people do, do here, positively speaking, they're not reinventing the wheel. It's just things that are tried and tested perhaps elsewhere. Yeah. So there's a clear correlation between being active and also... Um, Let's call it having positive mental hygiene. F for us, the, the impact we have, you know, on that level, uh, we kind of go to the grassroots. So I haven't actually mentioned it, but we're opening a new branch. I should have mentioned that, actually. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, yeah. <laughs> you're opening a new. <laughs> we're opening a new branch um, on the mainland in the Kedja specifically. So one of the the driving forces behind this, yet again, you know, is something I personally funded is because we want to reach out to, to, to youths in hard-to-reach areas, ultimately. That's, that's what we want to do. So that, that branch will allow us to increase our chances of success in terms of achieving that. Because I feel if you're able to impact the kids, that's where the majority of the scope and the traction and the growth in terms yeah. of the nation it comes from yeah. in any industry. Especially because our, our, our numbers of youth are huge. Um, Population-wise in the country, absolutely. Yeah, and, so, and a lot of them are idle as well. So the idea, you know, is to, to allow them to utilize our platform. You know, I'm, I'm hopefully going to try and see if you know if we can partner with companies on ground here. You know, let them know, look, this is what we're trying to achieve, and see if you know they want to support in some sort of way. You know. Yeah. All right. So thank you very much. Please let people know. Let all of Nigeria. Know. <laughs> Um, how it is, uh, where we can find you, social media, email, okay. all that kind of stuff, how people can contact you if they're, um, if they're looking to improve their fitness. Okay, okay. Well, um, generally speaking, we're, we're on most social media platforms, so Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, it's Elite Box Fitness, so that's E-L-I-T-E-B-O-X, then fitness, yeah. one word. Um, and then, you know, we're quite responsive on there, so you okay. get anything you need pretty much on there. All right, thank you very, very much. It's been good to have you. Oh, it's enjoyable, thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you very much for joining us here on Heart of the Matter with Ray here. We'll be right back after the break. Join us. Hello and welcome back to the Heart of the Matter. We just had an awesome conversation with Ray here, Giwa Osagi, and I love the way he talked about not just the impact on your physical health that boxing could have, but also the way it could help your mental and emotional health, something that needs serious help going on around this country. So I was really impacted by that. Elite Box Fitness are also giving out free sessions to five lucky viewers and the winners will be selected at random. But in order to win, you've got to follow us at HOTMTV on Facebook and Instagram. You've got to tag five friends to make sure that they follow us. Follow Elite Box Fitness on Instagram and all social media platforms. And make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and comment on at least five of our videos. That's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and make sure you tune in next week. Thank you. God bless.